Cool. Well, welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studio, Jeremy, Vincent, Ari. Ari, congratulations, mate, making the transition after having the award-winning shorts and um, being able to pull together your kind of first feature. How did it feel for you watching it on the big screen with an audience up here? It's a bit of a rush. I uh, yeah. kind of blacked out. Oh, yeah? Don't remember much from the screening. Though Vincent was sitting behind me, and right. I could feel your, your energy. And I, was <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was worried you were going to kind of like... Strangle Yeah, strangle me if it no, was bad no. or... <laughs> What was it? What did stand out? What like what were the kind of the glimpses or the shutter bugs of, of memory from from, from the screening? Yeah, from having that experience. Kind of remember a few laughs, which yeah. uh, I thought were pretty cool. I wasn't expecting that, um, and I was I was happy with that because the film is pretty absurd. Yeah. Um, and I, I was happy people read it that way. Yeah. In moments, um, and there are a few gasps and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Vincent, for you, like like taking on the work of a first time feature filmmaker, although very acclaimed obviously for the work he was doing in short form. Um, what was the first meeting you had? Was it in person, on Skype? Like how did you do it? Skype. You Skyped. Well, it was in Australia, you know, so um, it was complicated to, um, to communicate at first. But yeah, we did a Skype and uh, we went really well actually. We, we had a few laughs on the first Skype and I personally felt comfortable with uh, with a sense of humor, even though the movie is pretty dark, and um, and once again, I mean, the, sc the script was uh, pretty clear to me, but the fact that there was so much, uh, I mean, I could see what kind of director he was through the the short, so I was very confident. Yeah, what do you look for? Do you do, do you want them to present you with like a lookbook of images and other things? Do you want to just kind of talk about the story? No, there's no rules really. It's yeah. just you know, you you. you you read, you see something that that person did, and you recognize something you're attracted to or not, really. And uh, I mean, for me, it was pretty obvious right away. Yeah. Jeremy, there probably isn't a more beautiful way to train a child assassin than paint bombs and, balo paint bombs and balloons. Um, but for you, kind of having to kind of have this experience and Obviously, there's a, a physical resemblance between you and Vincent that kind of makes the film stronger as well, even though the, just the you know the connection in the eyes. And between us two, too. Uh, and you guys, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, yeah. Big Maybe nose, you need, eyes. A, you need to grow a mustache <laughs> as well, just so you've got some facial hair to compare with these guys. But how is it for you coming into this like family of filmmakers and other people? And did you feel comfortable straight away, or? Well, at first, I was a bit like anticipating the the filming. I never done that before. I didn't know how. It how it would be. Then once I was on set it was great. It was just we had fun moments and the filming was great. Yeah. How was seeing your face fifteen, twenty feet tall? Was that weird for you or was well, it? Well cool? yeah, at first I was well I don't like watching myself on camera so at first it was weird but then yeah by the end of the film I got used to it. In terms of like the background to this, um, you know, we see kind of children being put in these weird positions, everyone from like even teenage paparazzi who like kind of break down that, that barrier between people, that lack of expectation that they're going to do something that's um, kind of, you know, pervasive or provocative. Um, and we're seeing child soldiers in Africa and all these other places. Um, for you, how much of that was a, uh, like an actual um, thing that you discussed with your cast, or how much of that was just kind of latent that you kind of let live there in the script? I think, uh, I mean, I think we only s discussed about, discussed kind of emotion. We didn't discuss politics or no, the world. Yeah. We discussed um, emotion, character, um, motivations. Yeah. Yeah, and we kind of, I mean, that stuff's, uh, that's for an audience to, to kind of, uh, bring themselves to, I reckon. Yeah, and in terms of like the politics of the situation, being able to set it somewhere that had no um, stamp of location, like that this isn't commenting on a particular place, uh, did you find that to be kind of a freeing element for you guys? Like, Well, for me personally, yes, it was because of the accent. You know, suddenly everybody has an accent more or less in the movie. Uh, you had some French, uh, South American. Um, Russian, Hungarian, and just see the names at the end of the movie, it looks like a Monty Python movie, really. So, uh, yeah, it g I mean, it personally, it gave me a sense of freedom. And uh, plus, uh, I, 
and that's really a directing choice but uh, I thought it was really a smart move because that metaphor can apply to a, a lot of different situations that you know we can see around the world and to be too precise on one thing would kill the fable aspect I guess of the movie. yeah absolutely Aaron would you agree with that yeah totally um, in regards to location yeah yeah um, yeah, I mean, like we're inspired by uh, kind of the initial spark was an article we read about Colombia, um, but we knew early on and child assassins in Colombia, but we knew we didn't want to tell a story specifically about Colombia. And we felt if we could strip location out, we could tell, focus on the emotions and the kind of drama of the story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, of course, the film is shot in both Melbourne, Australia and in Georgia. Um, that juxtaposition. Obviously, it's not the Melbourne I grew up in. I was we were joking with Vincent earlier that it looked exactly like my place, and those parents were exactly like my parents. <laughs> but like, of course, it's not. It could be anywhere. Um, but being able to film in your hometown um, and have those resources available um, was was that like a really cool supporting? Like, was that a supportive system? Was that a really good infrastructure to have? Or is it, did you find it also freeing to go off to somewhere completely different where you didn't have kind of the daily expectations of daily life behind you? I mean, it was really nice making it in Melbourne because that's where I'd made all my shorts, yeah. all my films. That's where I grew up, uh, you know, as a filmmaker. But on the other hand, I do like chaos. I like unpredictability. So for me, Georgia was pretty special too. Yeah, those buildings are incredible. Yeah. And I saw that there was like protected building service or other people that you might have had to kind of get through to shoot there. Or was that, was that something that was difficult to do? Was that easy? Everything in Georgia is pretty easy if you, are <laughs> if you can talk to the right people. Um, in the credits, I saw that there was a child psychologist on set as well. Like, is that something that was mandated or is that someone that you had to speak to on a, like every now and then? Well, um, at first we had to speak to her so she would like get through the the moral of the film like what what's happening in it so that every kid understands really and uh, yeah she was sometimes on set was that cool her experience being yeah, able to talk through those sorts of things yeah Eric? but you, you have to understand that a lot of kids you like chaos so that was, that was a perfect situation but that all the kids on a set it was uh, I mean I guess we needed that person to 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 middle down the you know the the general mood sometimes because Sometimes they just didn't want to work. They just wanted to have fun and they didn't get it. And why do we have to do it again and again and again? So I guess she was more like a, like a school teacher sometimes. Ari, you seem kind of uh, excited by the prospect of the acknowledgement of your love for chaos. So what, what is it about that situation? Do you, is it more that you'll, you'll kind of let cameras roll on all sorts of things? Or, or do you just kind of like watching the, the personal interactions? I guess it's just filmmaking uh, by its nature is like it's such a false thing, you know, we're creating something fake. And uh, when you bring the chaos, it just, the fakeness melts away, you know? When you have 15 <laughs> kids screaming, everyone forgets about, you know, professionalism. It's just like, let's just... Uh, but for you, that's something to be celebrated and... Yeah, it's animalistic. Yeah, I agree. That's yeah. life, you know? It's like we don't have lights and kind of controlled, mannered... Uh, situations in life that are, you know, blocked out for a camera. <laughs> yeah. Vincent, had you seen the film before here? Had you been shown it? No, no, I've seen it yesterday. Yeah. I had a few, um, on a few occasions, I had the possibility to see it, but it wasn't a final cut. And um, I guess when you're in, you're in the movie, you really never have a chance to see it for what it is. So to see it with, a, with an audience in such a particular uh, situation, I think it's the best way to perceive a little more of what the movie's about. And hearing that music as well, probably for the first time, which I found incredible. Like, I thought the, the score was just sensational, like, really, really gripping. No, I got caught by it, really. Yeah. And I had a few, uh, sometime I, I was a bit ahead of the, of the audience. I was like, but do they get that? Do they understand? And, and the way uh, the, the movie's finally cut, I could feel that some things that I, I wasn't seeing coming, they were coming in a more subtle way than it was even on the, on the script, really. So, no, I really got caught by it yesterday. Yeah, Ari, like some of the credits in the film as well, it's like, it really are, like people that are doing really great work, you know, cinematographers, etc. like everyone's doing great work from all over. For you, being able to kind of bring those people together must have been pretty exciting too. 
Yeah, I mean, that's everything. It's like the team that you build is, um, it's just such a team making kind of sport filmmaking. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's really special when like, you know, all these people work on it in pre-production and then they leave and then a crew comes on and shoots and then, you know, someone like Daniel who did the score came on at the very end and just makes this huge contribution to the final movie. That's really cool. How important was the Sundance element and the fellowship and all that sort of stuff to, to the film? Oh, it's huge. I mean, making a first film is really tough. And, uh, you know, they provided a lot of support to me through the labs. Um, and, you know, definitely definitely helped the project along in a big way. Yeah, and gives you a couple of people to bounce ideas off as well. I yeah, exactly. Sure. Yeah, very cool. Well, we appreciate you guys coming in and having a chat with us. Been, and congratulations on a fantastic film. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks. Cheers.